Hey there, Paul on the Plane here, and I'm excited to welcome you back to Faking Space. Hope you are ready to dive back into our analysis of the images and videos from the world's space agencies. Here, as Season 3 of Faking Space begins, we'll continue where we left off in Season 2 by covering more of the mountain of inconsistencies in the Apollo Space Program. Special thanks again to tireless researcher Scott Henderson, who single-handedly uncovered the problems we covered in the second half of Season 2 and continue here in Season 3, after his more than 10,000 hours of examination and investigation. Season 3, Episode 1 here, focuses on the Apollo program and the Van Allen radiation belts. It's not uncommon to hear many claim that NASA is talking out of both sides of its mouth when we hear we can't leave low Earth orbit, or the Orion program needs extra shielding because of the high levels of radiation. That all those claims don't seem to reconcile with what Apollo missions managed to accomplish by navigating all the way to the moon, hundreds of thousands of miles past the Van Allen radiation belts. No, NASA and those who want to support the propaganda about the moon landing missions will simply try to explain to you now that the Apollo flight trajectories allowed them to avoid the inner Van Allen radiation belt, the highly dangerous one, and the astronauts only went through the outer belt and did so very quickly by heading on a northerly path. But the Starfish Prime radiation dissipated and NASA eventually decided that the Van Allen radiation belts weren't enough of a hazard to ground missions to the moon. Trajectory analysts found the safest way through the region and mission planners reasoned that the astronauts would pass through the worst of the belts fast enough that they didn't need any additional protection. All the electronics and instrumentation lining the walls of the command module would give them enough of a kind of makeshift shelter. At the end of the Apollo program, NASA found that its astronauts have not been exposed to any more radiation than the average Atomic Energy Commission worker who deals with radioactivity on a daily basis is exposed to in a year. And really, in the scope of the Apollo program, a little bit of radiation exposure was not the highest risk the astronauts ran in going to the moon. More importantly, the course which each of the Apollo craft took avoided the most lethal parts of the inner belts completely, and they only went through the thinnest parts of the outer belt. In the end, the simple answer to why the Van Allen radiation belts were not the killer issue that some people think it was, and how the Apollo missions cut the radiation exposure for the crews to between just 1 and 5% of what it could have been, is because the Apollo missions didn't need to go straight through the Van Allen belts. They basically flew around the most deadly areas and were not in the less dangerous areas for long enough for it to be a showstopper. So while the Van Allen belts are lethal, they could really only kill an astronaut if they were to spend several days in their radioactive vicinity. And despite the challenges the belts create when leaving Earth, we should actually be thanking them for protecting life on our planet from utter annihilation. If you search for an image to show you the Apollo flight paths, you'll find this northerly route over and over again being illustrated. Makes sense, right? Whoops, not if you do your research. Here's the issue with the explanation that we now get from NASA and its fanboys and fangirls. When you take the time to dig into the information NASA originally produced and provided to the public, like Mr. Henderson has done, you will find this attempt to avoid the dangerous radiation was not really accounted for, and certainly not mentioned at the time. Take the Apollo press kits, for example, which are highly detailed, explaining each part of the mission and very technical in nature, and were released to the media in advance of each mission's launch. They fail, however, to mention this northern trajectory was part of the plan. It's not even in the documentation. And the illustrations of the path that the astronauts took away from the Earth all were planned to be at or near the equatorial plane, which is where we are told the deadliest parts of the radiation belts exist. Take this image from the Apollo 8 press kit, page 21. We are told that the various Apollo missions all traveled on basically the same course. The Apollo 11 press kit has a similar image on page 9. And then, when you dive in deeper, which you have to do, you find on page 34 where they describe the trajectory the spacecraft will take once it starts its translunar injection from the Earth, parking orbit is just south of the equator in the South Pacific. Further, and potentially the nail in the coffin, at least to me, there is no mention of the Van Allen belts or the potentially high and even deadly levels of radiation in any of the mission transcripts during the time the astronauts were allegedly passing through the belts. Mission Control doesn't ask, 
how they're doing. The astronauts don't remark about how they were feeling or how the equipment or electronics are handling these high levels of radiation for hours. Well, that's because it appears that the Van Allen radiation belt issue turned out to be something that NASA was forced to address afterward. As you can see, the original image on the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum site, a northern route was not needed to be explained until later when NASA needed to cover its tracks. Wait a damn minute, you can't change your mind on the course the astronauts took after the fact. All that extra time and fuel needed to take that course was not accounted for going into each mission. How much more fuel and time would that have required? Dig deep enough and you'll find even images like this, where the Saturn V is shown launching to the west and north and then going around the south pole to avoid the inner Van Allen belt. As usual, inconsistencies and extreme lack of continuity in their stories. NASA, you may want to update your propaganda for the Orion program. Your successor to Apollo claims it will take people away from Earth and through the radiation belts, but you're failing to illustrate the correct path. You will show your space fantasy crafts leaving from the equatorial plane, just like the original Apollo press kits showed. All right, thank you for watching season three, episode one of Faking Space. In episode two, Mr. Scott Henderson and I will reveal multiple scene takes required to simulate the moon landings in Apollo 11 and how objects were moved or even missing from one scene to another, including the infamous flag. The only question will be whether they were intentional acts by whistleblowers. Until next time, this has been Paul on the Plane. On behalf of Mr. Scott Henderson, thanks for watching.